we're with um, Helen Barry, who's from Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, and her business is called War on Waste Weekly. So um, tell us, Helen, how are you getting on with you and your family down there in Sydney at this time? Well, so far, um, we're going okay. I believe that we're in one of the hotspots uh, for the coronavirus, but so far... I mean, our life has um, changed quite a lot, I suppose, in terms of the kids are off school, um, my youngest is off childcare. So uh, yes, I'm now working from home effectively, um, which I was before, but not with all my family with me. My husband is off work as well. His business has gone into hibernation, which is, um, so it's quite stressful. And, um, but you know, we're adapting and managing and, um, trying to look at the positives of the, of the time, really. Mm. And can you give us a little cameo about yourself and your background and your business now? Sure. So my background is I, I was a journalist for a number of years in magazines and then um, I had my two children. And as a result of that, I got interested in waste and I got involved. I was inspired by uh, the ABC documentary, War on Waste. And as a result of watching that, I decided that, you know, how could I make a difference to this situation? And I decided to create a website, an online magazine called War on Waste Weekly to educate people about the small changes that they can make to help the planet. So that was, um, that was about 18 months ago I started that. And along the way, I discovered... Uh, I learned how to make my own soap. And that became this really joyous thing that I could do that gave me an, a crea another creative outlet. And now my business is making soap um, as well, which I sell through the website, uh, through the waronwasteweekly.com.au we website, yeah. And so I, I guess you're already online, which is a good thing with your sales, but how have you been um, pivoting and adapting is uh, soap would be in demand at this time, is it? Well, yes, soap is very much in demand. Um, I was hoping to pivot into hand sanitizer, but I discovered that that's, there's actually a lot of red tape in terms of insurance for making hand sanitizer. They've relaxed the standards a bit, apparently, but it doesn't help small makers. So I guess I pivoted in terms of um, looking at my products and thinking, well, I need to make something that's specifically good for hand soap, something that's a harder bar. Um, perhaps I've, I've created these bars that split in two now so that you can have one for the shower and one for the sink. And as a way to, you know, people are obviously, money is tight now for people, a lot of people. And the idea that, you know, making things go further and last longer uh, is, a, is a good way to reduce waste too. So. You know, I'm just trying to pivot, I guess, off those ideas that inspired me and thinking about how I can bring those ideas into this new situation. Um, I mean, we're not taking our plastics back to the supermarket quite so often as we were before to recycle. Um, so things have changed a bit, but, you know, the philosophy remains the same. Mm. And, um, you know, I've, I've talked to a number of people who've said they've become more conscious of the resources that they they need to live and also uh, reducing their waste at the same time. Have you noticed that? Yes. I, I mean, I definitely think that, um, you know, in terms of where we're at now, I mean, we were, I was very interested in reducing our waste as a family. We originally started out as a project of taking, reducing, changing one thing each week to reduce our waste. So we started composting, um, you know, we started recycling all our soft plastics. We said no to any sort of single use and made sure we were following um, using reusable things and recycling and upcycling. So we've been doing that for a while, but I think now what's changed is just keeping it as absolutely simple as possible, you know, with the, with the cooking, you know, if I've got eggs, milk, flour, fruit and vegetables, I'm totally happy. I can make something with that. And I don't have to have, you know, pink Himalayan rock salt to, to make my life complete. I think that there's, you know, that in the olden days, well, in, the, in wartime, obviously, rationing was a huge thing. And, and where it's the first time my generation anyway has experienced anything 
like the, this toilet paper fiasco and, you know, the, the, the resources are tight at the moment. And so we don't want to waste anything at all, even more so than before, um, just so that we have what we need, you know. I think it's been a bit of a wake-up call for people that really, you don't really need very much to get by, you know, right yeah. now. Yes, yeah, so you're actually learning some of these things for the first time, are you, um, younger people? Or are, are there things in your background that you're drawing on, you know, your resilience, yeah. self-sufficiency skills, or is this all new for you? Um, well, I had grandparents that were very self-sufficient, you know. I remember they were always, I mean, they were always composting, they were always reusing things. I remember my grandmother telling me about uh, dresses made out of sacks of flour and, you know, that sort of thing. And I was very aware of the fact that things were always repaired and not thrown away. You know, they, they didn't have that culture that we, that I grew up with in, in the 80s. You know, if something broke, you just threw it out. You got a new one. It was not necessary. Or you put it in a drawer because you thought you might fix it later on and you never got to it. But, yes, no, I definitely learnt that from them and I learnt that value of appreciating um, looking after things, you know. And I think that a lot of that has gone by the wayside now and perhaps times like this where supply chains are cut, people can't get a hold of things in quite the same way. You can't just have whatever you want immediately right now. I think that that's educating people to really value what they have, you know, and making it last that little bit longer. So, um, yes, it's been in my background, but yes, it's, it's given me probably more, um, reason to be self-sufficient than there was before before i was just worried about the planet whereas now i'm worried about the planet and my own family's health and and just keeping us all healthy you know so mm. so how do you think things will be different on the other side of this then what what are the longer term implications and social cultural change and economic change well i'm i like to think that this will reinforce things like the slow movement. I mean, we really need to slow down now. And, you know, I think that the most important thing right now is that we um, get to grips with where we're at and we lower our expectations. So, I mean, I think that it's a twofold process. We have to think about where we're at right now and just take it day by day rather than getting overwhelmed about, well, how soon are we going to be out of this situation? Um, but at the same time, at the other side, I'm hoping that we appreciate um, gathering more, you know. I like to think that we've spent a lot of time being online and that perhaps we'll find going outside and reconnecting with people a much more joyous experience perhaps than ever before. And I like to think that we'll appreciate things more because we've been denied them for so long. Mm. And, um, you know, what's one piece of advice that, that you give to your friends or that you have, you know, taken on board yourself to getting through this time? Um, I would say just take it one day at a time. Lower your expectations. I mean, we have days where we don't get very much done at all. Um, routine, actually, funnily enough, you know, has gone out the window for us and I'm okay about that. Our days seem to be dictated more by how we're feeling, what the weather's like. You know, I think that I'd say to everyone, you don't actually have to achieve anything in this period. Let go of that idea and just focus on surviving. Like that is the achievement right now. All we need to do is survive and help as many vulnerable people in our communities as we can to do the same. Um, just take the pressure off yourself and try not to look too far ahead. That's what I would mm. say. Yeah, and so um, in, in terms of your daily routines and strategies, so, you know, how are you get up in the morning and are you going for a walk or um, have you got access to the outdoors still? We do. Well, usually what happens is my husband gets up in the morning and takes the two children out so I can actually get some work done. So he'll take them for a bike ride. 
because all the playgrounds are closed, of course, but um, we're not far from Centennial Park. So we can, he can ride up to Centennial Park and they can ride around and they can ride back and that's their exercise for the day. And that allows me just to work in very short, sharp bursts instead of doing whole days, which I'm used to. I tend to just grab snatches of time when I can. And then, you know, I try to work at night, although I'm so exhausted after having the children around all day and homeschooling and trying to achieve things. I really do feel that I'm just trying to be kind and easy to myself and say, this is okay, you know. You don't have to be perfect and get it all right at the moment, you know. It's, it's enough of an achievement if um, everyone's still standing at the end of this. I think mm. that's really important to remember. Mm. And uh, do you think it'll make us sort of less greedy and ambitious and, um, you know, seeking that bigger life? Or do you think we will start to appreciate more just our local local community and being more resourceful? Uh, oh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. It would be wonderful to, for if it just yes made us more focused on living locally and connecting with our local community and supporting our local businesses you know i feel that um you know now is the time to really look around you at the people that are struggling in your own community and you know if you can buy meat from your local butcher go to your local butcher you know if, if it's right next door to coles I think coals are going to be okay. You know, <laughs> they're selling a lot of toilet paper. Just think about the smaller businesses and the people that really need the support right now. And I do hope that as a result after this, that you know perhaps these big global supply chains will be a bit of a thing of the past. You know, it would be nice if Australia got back into a bit more manufacturing and making and valuing. You know things that are handmade and handcrafted. I mean, I certainly think people like you, Jane, have done a lot to support that movement. And I'd like to see more of that, you know? I think I don't really need to buy something in China that's gonna be sent over on a ship and, you know, take a couple of weeks to get here. I'd rather, you know, buy something from someone that lives two suburbs away and helps support their family, you know? Mm. So the world suddenly got smaller, do you think? You know, yes. we've gone from big to, to um, you know, more family oriented and, and back to that, that um, I, I guess, just being resilient within our own communities rather than always seeking to go outside. Yes, I think so. I think that, you know, I think we were very removed from things before when things came from other places and they magically appeared in shops and we had no idea about really where they came from or how they were made. I mean, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, fashion is, is going through a whole revolution now and people are becoming more aware of these things. But I think that, you know, actually being told, no, you can't, uh, you can't go shopping or you, you it's only essential now what you can do really does make you more resourceful and live more locally and, and think about you know how you might adapt your own clothes or you know get the sewing machine out and you know and not waste money as well like I think it's an important time for people to consolidate what they have and um, be more resourceful yes and live definitely more locally and and, and closer to um, you know, the family has become the centre of the home again. I mean, who'd have thought that all of a sudden Australia's children would all be home and being homeschooled? I mean, it's and women are buying flour and making bread, you know. It's, I actually think it's quite a wonderful time in a lot of ways, Jane. It's, it's actually reconnecting people with what matters and that the simple things in life really are the things that give you the most joy, you know. You don't need it. Mm -hmm a Louis Vuitton handbag to feel complete, do you? <laughs> oh, well, it's been lovely to hear your insights. Thank you very much for chatting to us, Helen. My pleasure, Jane. It's been lovely to connect. Thank you so much.